Hi guys and welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to demonstrate some animation principles of anticipation as well as follow through and overlapping. In the first half of this video we'll be doing anticipation in terms of the arrow where the arrow gets pulled back. Anticipation is basically the before movement of a main action if we were to just try and shoot the arrow at this point, it would just fall straight to the ground because there is no motion behind it that gives it force. And so by pulling the arrow back, it's giving it some uh, tension, which is going to then, as it's released, provide it with the force to shoot outwards. And then when it comes to follow through and overlapping, at the second half of the video, we'll be doing that through the string here, where as the string gets pulled back with the arrow, and once the arrow is released, it holds back just that one frame extra before it starts flinging back and wobbling a little bit before it settles back into its original state. So let's get started. Let's go File, New, and then I want you to select Full HD, Make sure your frame rate is at 15 frames per second and hit create. As always, let's come up to the top right hand corner and go fit in window so we can see our entire stage. Now, if you're one of my students, a bow and arrow image will be made available to you. If you are not, you can easily make one yourself in your favorite drawing program and then import that into here. So let's go file import import to library we're going to select both the bow and the arrow and select open then i'm going to come over to my library and i'm just going to drag across the bow only and place it somewhere around here i'm going to double click layer one and rename it to bow i'm going to select this button here to add a new layer i'm going to rename this arrow and again i'm going to come over to my library and select my arrow and drag and drop that in place as well. I'm also going to create a new layer and I'm going to drag this layer underneath the bow and I'm going to rename this one string. Oops, I forgot the G. And what I'm now going to do with this layer still selected is select my line tool. I'm going to come over to my properties and make sure that my stroke size is at size 10 and I'm going to change my color to like a black. Then I am going to draw my line just behind here, just like that. So what I'm now going to do, because I only want to focus on the arrow, I'm going to lock my string layer and I'm going to lock my bow layer. And I'm going to leave my arrow layer free and make sure I have that one selected as well. I'm going to come over to frame 10 and I'm going to insert a keyframe. Then I'm going to do the exact same for the other two layers as well, returning back to my arrow layer. Now for my starting position, I make sure that you have your selection tool selected. I'm going to select my arrow and I want my arrow somewhere in the middle of my bow and somewhere where the end tip of these feathers just line up with the line with the, um, the string. Once I have done that, I'm happy with that keyframe. So now I'm going to come over to frame 10. And at frame 10, this is where I want it to be pulled all the way back. So I'm going to select my onion skinning so that I can see to make sure, like as you can see here, oh, my arrows are not lined up properly. So uh, this is the a really good way to just kind of keep track of where you're at. And I'm just going to pull my arrow back till it's about here and make sure that I've got it lined up quite nicely. Once I have done that, now I can come in and I'm going to work in twos to begin with to see how this works. So I'm going to come into frame three. I'm going to pull it back a little bit, making sure that I keep it lined. Then I'm going to come, I might pull that back actually just that little bit more. Yeah. I'm going to come into frame five and I'm going to push it back again a little bit more. I'm going to come to frame seven and I'm going to push that back a little bit more as well. I just realized I pushed that back way too much on frame five. 
So I'm going to just come back in and I'm just going to change that a little bit more. As well as this frame here as well. Kind of looking for an in between motion. That one, that one. Let's move this one forward a little bit more. That's okay. Uh, let's move that one up a little bit more. And then in this one here, let's move this one back a little bit. So we get a slower pull as it comes to the end. So let's have a look at this. So we know that that's a little choppy, but that's not that's not bad. So now we can look at it and you know what, I'm going to work in ones to make it a bit cleaner. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to do some in-betweens. Just by pulling it back, using my arrows as well because that helps keep my alignment. Uh, actually, yeah, let's move that one back a little. And this one a little bit more as well. And let's have a look at that now. And we can see that it's got a slower motion as it pulls back. And now we want to know that by frame uh, 17, it's going to be shot right across the end my arrow is going to be across my on off screen so I just need to insert a keyframe making sure I do that exactly the same for all layers so that they all are visible and so now I know at frame 17 I want to select my arrow I'm going to shift an arrow using the arrow keys and I'm just going to drag it all the way off my screen so now I know that I want to keep it pulled back here for a, a couple of frames. So I'm going to leave two frames and then I'm going to come in to frame 13. And what I want to do is I want to move it out. So maybe it's about here. Then I'm going to come again working in twos, coming over here and finding the middle motion, the middle area and pulling out. And now let's have a look at this here, pulling back and shooting across the screen. That's not too bad, but I do find that it seems to pause right here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add an in-between. And I'm just going to put an in-between motion here and another in-between motion here. So let's have a look at that. That looks great. So now we've just demonstrated and we've just shown you how to do that anticipation, which is the pullback before you let the arrow go. So now we're going to start, um, we're going to just lock this layer and we're going to come down to our string layer and make sure you have that layer selected. So using our arrow tool, we if you hover over the line, you can see that there's this little curve just underneath the arrow. We're going to take advantage of that. And so we're going to come up to frame 10 and we're going to grab that curve and we're going to make it curve just till it's just touching the end of that there to make it look as if it's being pulled back. Then we're going to come in to each frame and just make some adjustments as we feel we need it and move this uh, line so that our string is in the right place. And this just helps with the anticipation and um, of the arrow being pulled back. So work through that. And as you can see with the onion skinning on, you can actually see the motion and how as it gets closer we actually got a larger space between it, each keyframe. Okay, so now if we have a look at that, we'll see that it'll pull back, which is great, and we release the arrow. And that looks awesome. But now we need to do our follow through and our overlapping. So our follow through is at this point where we leave a couple of spaces and we have it so that uh, the arrow, as the arrow shoots out here, 
this is the motion where we leave this where we leave the we leave the string here for that extra time that it stays back but right here in frame 14 is when we start to move this one back so we make sure we've got it selected we bring it back all the way maybe have it overflow this is our overflowing here where it's flinging right back with all that motion behind it, all that power, then in the next frame, it's going to wobble back the other way, but maybe not as strong as it begins to lose some power. And then we have this motion out as it begins to lose power, and then it returns back to normal. So let's have a look at that. And that looks really good. Oops. So what we can do is we can select our uh, loop tool here. Let's extend it out. And let's have a look and in doing that what we've done is we've shot an arrow we've used anticipation to draw back the arrow to give it some power before it shoots off we've also used some follow through and overlapping here in this wobble as the string which was taught now falls back into place so i hope you had a good time watching this tutorial uh, Keep in mind that there will be more tutorials in the future and happy animating.